I grew up in Stoneham, though, so I'm not too far from home here. Uh, the MR Policy Institute, the reason we exist is to do things like this, hopefully educate the public on exactly what the regulatory policy and history is in the U.S. Again, I'm very happy to be here in support of the cell phone right to know legislation. I think it's something that can be done, isn't very costly, which is always a big hurdle to get over to try with any legislation. It doesn't, it's going to cost anybody a lot. It can happen quickly, uh, and I think uh, it's right that it's going to have to be municipalities all over the, the country pass it first to make pressure that a state, states will then join in, because it isn't going to be the federal government to do it first. It's going to have to be from the bottom up, so I think this is a, you, you really have an important opportunity here to, to be one of the first, be the first on the, on the East Coast. That would be great. Um, what we have found, we, we came uh, into, we organized 2003, uh, growing out a couple of previous organizations, but our goal is, besides public education, is to track what's happening in the U.S. is at the FCC, even though other, there are some other agencies involved in the safety aspects for, of exposure, but track what's happening at the FCC, what are they telling you, what are they really doing, are they protecting the public, should you have confidence in what they're doing. You've heard a lot about the cell phone discussion. The other end of that is the antenna sites. Your cell phones are not going to work if there aren't antenna sites out there. So uh, starting in 2011, we conducted about a two-year uh, investigation of antenna sites that are on rooftops around the country in different states. We chose rooftops because any, that a lot of different people have access to them. It isn't just phone company workers that may be on the rooftop near the antennas. You could have workers, roofers, people that have to repair the roof, people that have to repair air conditioning, people that have to repair elevators. All that stuff is up on the roof. And there, there are FCC regulations that are supposed to uh, control what people are exposed to in an occupational situation. If you, if you work for the cell phone company, then you get some training with that. If you're the roofer or the, um, the um, elevator repair guy, you're not supposed to be up there unless somebody has trained you and that, and that you have the ability to control your environment. In other words, you're supposed to be able to call in, I'm on the roof, shut the antennas off till I'm done. That's what, the way it's supposed to be. Or there's supposed to be barriers so that you can't get close enough to the antennas to be uh, in the danger zone. Or there should be signage or the, roof, the door to the roof should be locked. This is what we were looking at. Is the FCC enforcing any of this? And uh, if you want to go to our YouTube, go look on EMR policy up on YouTube, and you'll see there's several videos there of the work that we did. You'll see that signs aren't there, or the barriers are falling down, or there are supposed to be numbers to call on the signs. So say if you are the roofer, can I call up and find out from this company, I'm on this spot, will you turn the antennas down while I'm working, or what should I do to be safe? You'll hear the recordings of the calls. It was pitiful. We found most of this, we, well, we sent in written, uh, written complaints to the FCC, which is how you're supposed to report this. We sent over 100 of them uh, and showing sites that are out of compliance. Seven of them were in Massachusetts. And uh, there was one in Worcester that was, um, if you want to see, you can email me, I can send it to you if you want to see, but we, we took the, the expert who did the um, investigation for us, had his meter, took a picture of me, the reading of each of the meters on these locations to show whether, whether it was in compliance. And the majority of them, will, you would see O hyphen L, which means over limit. They were over the limit for general public uh, exposure. So here you have these workers up there on the roofs, no, some, if they've had no training, they don't even know they're in a danger zone. And this is multiplied by how many times? And uh, we, we put a press release out on this. It was, interestingly enough, it was posted on the AM Best uh, website, if you know them. They, they quantify risk for insurance companies. In other words, insurance companies look to AM Best to decide what they're going to insure for, what they won't insure for. In uh, February of uh, 2013, AM Best had put out its own report putting fracking, nanotechnology, cyber attacks, and radio frequency exposure to workers all in the same category as emerging risks with long tail 
consequences. In other words, it may take you years for, to find out what, what the, the actual risk will be. So they were advising against insurance companies insuring it on those. They, they put that on February of um, 2013. We put out a press release on our um, study in March of 2013, and they posted it on their news site. So they, they thought what we did was credible. And then later, uh, it was in October of 2014, some of you might have seen the article in the Wall Street Journal on this. They came to us. We were the, we were the basis of the, their uh, research for that article. They didn't name us, that's okay, as long as the, the news got out there, fine with us. But the point to be made here is that the FCC is not enforcing the limits we're living under. The limits we're living under are flawed, as, as you've heard so far. Uh, the limits, the, the safety limits we have only consider thermal injury. Am I going to get close enough to that antenna array or am I going to have the cell phone up to my ear and it's going to put out enough radiation to burn me or to, you know, to cause skin irritation or if you're on the, you know, if, if you're on a rooftop, you're going to start feeling sick and you need to leave before you throw up. You know, that's, that's what the safety limit is. And our investigation was to look at, is the FCC enforcing that? We think that's inadequate, again, as you heard from Dr. Uh, Sharma. There are many, many other effects that happen at much lower uh, levels that are they're totally ignored by the FCC. Well, our study showed that they don't enforce the limits that they have. We have learned they did put out a consent decree with one provider, Verizon, for sites in the Philadelphia area and the, and the Hartford, Connecticut area, which we, we reported on sites there. They won't tell us if they're the same addresses that we submitted, but I don't know anybody else who was doing this. <laughs> uh, so they, they, they cited Verizon on those two areas. We reported probably about 10 sites in those two areas. They ignored AT&T, they ignored T-Mobile, they ignored um, Sprint, back then there was still Sprint, um, and Metro PCS. They, none of them have gotten any kind of enforcement action, just Verizon. So there are many of, many of these antenna sites we know nobody's even gone to look at. So what does that have to do with, with your cell phone right to know law here? The FCC enforces for antenna, or is supposed to, regulates, let's say they regulate for antennas and for cell phones. And we, we know what they're doing is inadequate for both of those. So I think ask, asking for the cell phone right to know ask, is the place to start. The next thing you might want, many of you, if you have school-aged children or grandchildren, the next thing you might want to extend this to is Wi-Fi. What's happening with Wi-Fi? that your kids have to sit at at school every day. Maybe you was, uh, you know, did you, what did your school district do before they decided to put it in? Were you informed at all? Something I'm sure your school district doesn't even know. They'll tell you that the Wi-Fi is, is compliance with FCC so you don't have to worry. Well, it isn't compliance with the FCC, but the FCC does not regulate any other devices other than cell phones and the antennas for exposure to humans. That part of the regulations is, is called Part 15 and it's for intentional and unintentional uh, emitters is what they call it. And the things that come under that category that are only regulated for whether their emissions interfere with another device so the other electronic device won't work correctly. That's all. They're not looking at how that, the, the emissions interact with the human beings around them. Just with the other devices that may be around them, they don't want to get complaints that somebody's machine doesn't work because the other guys Wi-Fi is too strong, so my, uh, my baby monitor won't work. You know, that's what the regulation is for. The things that come under that are computers and peripheral devices for computers, tablets, wire, uh, cordless phones, whether the newer decked ones or the older uh, analog phones, Wi-Fi, smart meters, Bluetooth, wireless microphones and wireless headsets. And I, you go into a lot of offices these days and this receptionist is walking around with a headset on all day so she doesn't have to answer the phone. When I go to the dentist, when I go to the health center, that I go to primary care, bo both places, the receptionist's got, a, you know, got the headset on so she can answer the phone for wherever she is all day long. That's not, has not been regulated for the emissions from that, uh, how it interacts with her body. They don't look at it for those either. <clears throat> toys or remote controls for toys, walkie-talkies that are sold to children, baby monitors, garage door openers. So a lot of your consumer products, all, 
other than a cell phone or the antenna arrays, the regulations do not look at how the emissions interact with human beings. So I think it would be, uh, I think it's ingenious to start with a cell phone right to know law the way um, Dr. Lessig has written it. What they're asking is not any different than what's already in the, where uh, Dr. Davis showed you on your cell phone. But the, but the idea is to get it where you go to buy the phone, have it there too. A piece of paper you can read before you decide which phone. Instead of going home, buying the phone and not finding it until you get, you know, go through all these steps to get to it or you read the fine print. If you've looked at the uh, manuals that come with a cell phones and smartphones, you know, the print's about this big and it's on page one page here with 186. You know, it should be right up front. If they're putting it out there as information for the public in selling their product, it should be at point of sale. And I, as I said, we may, if we can get that through, then maybe we'll get to the next step, Wi-Fi, baby monitors, many of these other products that we're all interacting with every day. One thing we have learned, uh, the National Academy of Sciences back in 2008 was asked to look at the research record that the FCC um, exposure limits are based on. And if, were there problems in the research record? If there are, then that means there are problems with the safety limits. And they identified very clearly things like the, um, the, the model for exposure is a 200 pound, six foot tall military guy because the first people exposed to this were in the military, radar, that kind of thing. So the model, how, how does that body uh, absorb radiation? That's the model. It has, it has not been adjusted for pregnant women, children, elderly people, people on medication, you know, short people, nothing. It's just this one model of this big guy. Uh, the, the research that the standard is based on does not look at long-term exposures. They were just short-term exposures and they extrapolated it out. They didn't actually do the studies for long-term exposures. Um, there are not studies of how does radiation interact with metal around your face. For example, you have metal frame glasses or if you're a teenager with braces or you've got metal earrings and you're holding a cell phone up to your head, it's going to react differently. The, the metal is going to act like a light, uh, the radiation will act with it like light on a mirror. It reflects it and, it, and it, it behaves differently around metal than it does when you're holding it, when you're somebody with no glasses or no, no pierced earrings or no, you know, whatever piercing. And the other, the other thing about that is implanted medical devices. <clears throat> there are the, uh, the research literature that our standards are based on only was published before 1986. Lots of things have changed since 1986. One of those things is how many people have implanted medical devices that are electronic. So if you hold up a cell phone or you have a, a um, computer in your lap or any, any other type of thing, how many children have cochlear implants for hearing and then you put a cell phone up to their ear. So there, there are many uh, situations uh, that we're exposed to everyday common things now that uh, the safety standards didn't even look at. So you need to have more information and a place to start is with the information the manufacturer is giving you about how to use your phone safely. So uh, I, I strongly encourage you as a town here in, in Framingham to take this on. I think you'd really be breaking ground. Thank you.